New shooter coverage of IBC 2023 is sponsored by Atlas Lens Co., Atomos, Sennheiser, and b &H. I'm Eric Nesa with Newshooter.com and I'm at IBC 2023 in Amsterdam. I'm with Andrew from Deity. How's it going, buddy? It's going fantastic. Some of the best weather I think I've ever been mm -hmm. at an IBC show. And you should be here <laughs> if you're not here. Yeah, I mean, come on, this morning, big blue sky, oh. nice. It was even almost warm. I think that's the first time I've ever felt the sun in, in uh, Amsterdam in, in September. Yeah, I, <laughs> I almost wanted to go for a walk. I mean, I didn't because, you know, I'm fat, but I almost <laughs> wanted to. Oh, so I thought you were going to say because I'm stuck in this booth with all this great new gear you got to show. I'll tell you, it's been a fantastic <laughs> attendance show. The quality of person that comes to IBC is always top notch. It's one of the best shows out in the world, and we wanted to bring some of the best products to these people to really kind of show them what we've done differently in the last 12 months and really everything we're showing has been some of these in the works for a year or two so we've been really excited to just bring it and finally get the show it to folks first before we get going we have some a lot of new products to show and some and uh, you know some prototypes give me an update on Theos what's going on so our Theos 2 channel ENG kit was delayed about 30 days. That's because we found the ability to add antenna diversity to the receiver without increasing the cost or the size. Mm. And by adding this and doing some retweaks, we really can increase the stability and the performance of the kit. And it's gonna benefit the customer long-term. Mm. So rather than hold off on that secret to ourselves and come out with a Mark II in a year to make everyone's Mark I discontinued mm. and trash your your value we said we'll fix it first and then we'll sell it refreshing smart move you don't you know you don't want to upset your customers they're the ones that you need we all have like an ecosystem of people <laughs> we, we all need each other in this one we have a community that puts a lot of trust in us mm. they've also told us exactly what they want and our success is solely due to them and I wouldn't want to do anything that would dishonor any trust they've given us. Mm. We've been given a shot to really do something new and different for the industry that we feel are toys that we want in our own kit. Yes. And I want to do that same thing for other people. And I wouldn't want it if this was done to me. So we wanted to hit a little three week delay. So everything's going to be coming out here in Europe in about mid October. For North America, it's going to be end of October and for the rest of the world, it's really gonna be based on the shipping of your region and whatnot. Fantastic, well, good news. Thank you for yeah. that update, Andrew, that's really important. Um, let's move on to something that's uh, new that you have right behind me. What do we got here? So we've got a couple more entries into the Theos ecosystem family. What we've got here is the DLTX. This is a three pin Limo transmitter that also has haptic feedback, as well as it's got Phantom 48. So Very what nice. this means is it looks like a body pack. It acts like a body pack, but it can run on your boom pole. So it's got this lightweight build that a transmitter for a body pack would have, but now on the end of your boom. Instead of one of those big, giant, bulky kind of cube transmitters. Yes. That, because we're putting it at the head of the boom, we wanted to go as lightweight as possible. We also wanted to make it in a form factor that let's say you're not running a boom. Let's say you need a lav that day. It also still handles three volt and five volt lavaliers, no problem. And they use the same wiring technology that other people do for the three pin limo standard for lavaliers. So if you have these kinds of lavaliers, migrating over the Deity is super easy. And are you gonna offer some special mounting options because you're looking at putting it on a boom pole, it's not gonna just be clipped onto Absolutely. your bail? Absolutely. The ones we've got here are just 3D prints of some, some CAD concept designs for mounting. Of course, we're gonna post these kinds of photos and we know the community out there is gonna say, yeah, that's fine. Or they may say, you know what? We can come up with a better idea. Can you do it this way? And we'll take that feedback from the community in terms of mounting options. We also know there's a robust community out there uh, like Second uh, Sound Guy Solutions that come up with some fantastic solutions and aftermarket accessories for transmitters just for this purpose. So we know there's an avid 3D printing hobbyist boutique accessory world in our sound community that's really going to get gung-ho about the DLTX. 
Now, uh, does this one also has uh, an internal option for recording? Yep, of course, it's got the 32-bit float recorder and the same time code system as the other systems. And of course, it's gonna sync up with the TC1, the TCS01 slate wirelessly. So as you try to control it through Citus, everything you know about the Citus audio world lives in this unit as well. And what's really great here in Europe is gonna be able to transmit and record. And of course, standard flare in the United States is gonna be transmit or record for any unit that was purchased in or operated in within the United States. Now, um, something that I think people were confused about, that maybe I was even confused about, uh, if you take your, your European transmitter, or yeah, your European transmitter out of the country, you end up in the United States, how does that affect the recording? Does it work, does it not work? How, how does that, and how does it not work? Sure, so as soon as you bring in a European system, so first off, when you buy a European system, it's gonna be specced for the RF output and the frequencies that we have here in different European countries. So if you bring it to the US, First and foremost, you need to fall in line with FCC rules and regulations based on frequencies. Mm. So you're gonna get out your Citus Audio app and you're gonna make it conform to US laws and regulations. At the same time, what we're doing in the background is we're noticing you're in the US now. And to comply with US laws, we're also gonna turn off transmit and record. So in Simple. order to yeah make you compliant as an illegal wireless operator in the US, no matter who you are, license, unlicensed, doesn't matter, you need to be uh, really compliant with US law. And in doing so, you're doing full compliance with US law when you're there temporarily from Europe. And if you're purchasing a system in the US, you will always need to be in US compliance with law because that's where the system was purchased. So even if you take it overseas, it still is gonna end up complying with US law in some regards, not your local rules and regulations in terms of frequencies and RF output, but the transmit and record functionality. And that's important, I mean, because you don't want to mess around with these frequencies. Maybe give, give, give me a, a little overview of why that's important, because there are sure. these frequencies, like, you can't just, oh. like, be hopping around. Oh, you can absolutely. be messing with, you know, aviation. You could be messing oh, with, gosh, you know, yeah. legal stuff. I mean, there's so much that goes on that is wireless around you, you don't even mm -hmm. realize. Your cell phone in North America will sit somewhere in the 600s, but over here in Europe, it may be in the 800s. 700s. So if you're using a wireless microphone from Europe that was spec for the 600s, and you bring it to North America and you're on a shoot and you're firing up <laughs> stuff and half the people's cell phones on set stop working, <laughs> it's because you are ruining their day. <laughs> Which could really slow down production in a whole other capacity. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So you need to be in compliance, put your transmitters where they need to be so that you have a good day and everyone else is playing fair with each other. Be responsible, be a good person. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is, you, by being uh, a good steward of wireless, you also help everyone else. Right, 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 right. Awesome, anything else on feature-wise you want to talk about? No, it's got great battery life, max power consumption, which means we're running the recorder, we're running the time code, we're running the phantom power, we are running at 50 milliwatts here in Europe, you're gonna get eight hours of battery life out of the DD lithium batteries. Very nice. So if you start turning off some of those features, don't use all of them, pull your RF power down a little bit, you can expect better battery life. And if you're running it as a lavalier, like just like the DBTX, you should be hitting somewhere around almost 15 hours of run life as a lavalier system uh, at minimum power consumptions. Meaning you turn off the Bluetooth, maybe you don't need it. Maybe you're running at 10 milliwatts. You turn the screen off because it's in someone's pocket anyway. You don't mm -hmm. see it, right? you're gonna hit oh, nearly 15 hours of battery life, which is fantastic for a transmitter in this category. The other thing we announced here at the show in terms of wireless is the brand new Deity Butterfly Antenna. Very nice. This starts at 740, so it's below our own system, which makes it readily compatible uh, uh, to other people's wireless ecosystems that start at the 740 range, but it goes all the way up now to one gigahertz. So if you also have some of the expanded wireless from other brands, not just our own, you can really utilize this for all of those frequency bands instead of having to carry around multiple little antennas that you have to swap out. <laughs> so it really simplifies your workflow out there. And what's great is it, it just, it mounts up on just a simple little quarter 20, super nice rugged BNC, super low profile, super lightweight. And as you can see, it's not intrusive at all. It's very yeah, yeah, small. It's clean. You can run this on a bag into a little distro system against all your wireless and benefit from having multiple receivers in different bands because it can handle all the bands. Nice, Yeah. very clean. Very nice, and simple. 
Yeah, yeah. Well done. And, and the transmitter's about the same as the Theo system, right? About, what is it, like 500 feet? Or yeah, so, yeah, so if you're running on whips, you can expect uh, we've gotten some test. I think when I was running a test in LA in front of a lot of people at 20 milliwatts, yeah. we had absolutely no issue uh, getting up to like nearly 320 feet on 20 milliwatts in the duplex gap. Mm -hmm. This is going to handle the same thing in the US, no problem. Very cool, Andrew. You're a busy guy. You're just always creating. Well, it's it's <laughs> it's only because the community asks us to, to, to really kind of do this kind of stuff. And it's what our passion is. This is something that we love. I was a sound mixer before. I still enjoy getting out there a little bit. And at the same time, it's what I always wanted. So I'm getting to make the toys I want. <laughs> the toys you want to And I get use. to share them with the rest of the world. And then I get to hear these amazing stories also of like, oh, we used it on this. And I'm like, holy shit. Oh. Holy sheep! <laughs> I you use it on what? Like I, I'm a fan of that. Yeah. So I love, I love it. This is this is a passion. This is a love. This is, this is my life. Awesome. What do I? I know this prototype. Do we have any like pricing ideas? Uh, pricing is still up in the air. We're still trying to figure out what the cost is to manufacture the final feature sets. What other feature sets can we slam into it at the last minute? Software or not? Hardware, whatever. We're trying to still see. Is there any little tweaking we can do to really? bring it to that next level before we have to ship it out. Uh, we are kind of looking at a January ship date. So we're not right around the corner, but not too far not too off far either. Yeah. yeah, pretty good. So we're very close. It's probably about 90% done. That last 10% we're trying to finalize and also listen to the community. Fantastic, and how about your, your antenna? Antenna is gonna be about the same kind of time frame. Uh, there's still some polish, a little bit of stuff that we want to hear about the community and what they want in this antenna. Any kind of compatibility or accessories that they want included. You know, we're big on the accessory game, including them in the package. So we're just listening right now. Awesome. And still, price is still in flux? Price is still in flux, but again, we're still deity. So you know what it's going to be. It's <laughs> going to be go. very aggressive. There you go. Okay. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Thank you.